Okay, this is part five of our pump head calculation section. So we've worked through most of chapter 13 in your B1 third class textbooks, and this is where we finish off with your textbook material. So part five, we have a small section on cavitation and how it relates to pumps. And we also have another term, NPSH, net positive suction head. And let's see what those are all about. Okay, so here we've got some sort of uh, pump uh, impeller, and it looks like we've got some damage. And this might be typical of cavitation damage, where we have essentially looks like some little holes that are smashed into that surface. And cavitation is a problem that we can have if our pumping system is not performing correctly. Okay, so here's how cavitation develops. We know that we have a relationship between temperature and pressure when it comes to evaporating or phase changes inside of a liquid. So here's water. We have a list uh, temperature versus pressure, and these are the saturation conditions. So if we take this water and it's at uh, atmospheric pressure, what we should expect is that as we raise the temperature and we get to oh, about 100 degrees, we're going to start to create a phase change. So as we increase the liquid's temperature, we get closer to that phase change. However, we can also manipulate the pressures. So for instance, if a pressure drops, closer to the, the actual temperature of the water, we can also force a phase change to occur at a lower pressure. So for instance, if we had 50 degree water and we drop the pressure down to about 12 kPa of pressure, that 50 degree water would be able to evaporate. So cavitation is formed anywhere that we have a very low pressure region and we may have unexpected or unanticipated boiling that happens. So some places where we may have low pressures in our system, um, in pumps, so in the suction side of pumps or right in the eye, right in the very center of that, that impeller uh, would be a spot where we have very low pressures. Um, and then as well, sometimes in high velocity regions. So uh, we know by Bernoulli's, we have a relationship between velocity and pressure. So if we have a very high pressure or high velocity region, we may have a low pressure to go along with it. Anytime that that pressure drops below the saturation pressure for whatever temperature of fluid we're dealing with, vapor can form. And it's that vapor that causes the cavitation. We create that little vapor bubble and then if the pressure goes up again that vapor bubble collapses and because that fluid, the, 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 the water or whatever the liquid is that surrounds it, it rushes in to fill that space and it impacts against the surface and over time we impact it enough and it's going to create damage to that surface. And that's that pitting that you typically see um, in impellers and other spots indicating that you have cavitation. Now pumps are especially prone to cavitation. In a pump, you know, the, the purpose of it, we think, is to produce flow at high pressures. But in order for us to be able to move fluid through it and create those high pressures, we also have to create a suction. And the suction is where we have our biggest risk of cavitation. Low pressure means high risk of evaporation, okay? high risk of cavitation. Um, 
And we have to be very careful that we don't drop too low in pressure inside of our pumps. Otherwise, we're going to have a risk of cavitation. Here's another way to look at it. Okay, so I have a pump and we have an inlet of the pump. And we go into the eye, so that center of the impeller, and then we have our outlet. And if we look at what happens as we go through the pump in terms of the pressure, we start out with a inlet pressure and we create some suction. It's already reasonably low at the inlet. The eye is usually where we have the lowest pressure. And then it increases as it goes through that pump so that we develop a higher outlet pressure. Now, what's important is the fluid that's passing through. And depending on the temperature of that fluid, it's going to have a different uh, pressure where it is saturated or a vapor pressure. And as long as the pressure that we hit in the eye is greater than that vapor pressure, we should have no cavitation. But we can get cavitation in a few different cases. One, if we don't supply that pump with enough starting pressure, then what's going to happen is this whole curve is going to be shifted down. And we are into the point where we may have cavitation. So that eye has dipped below the vapor pressure. We also could have a case where the temperature of the fluid is higher than expected. And that raises the vapor pressure. And all of a sudden, we have a section where the pressure has dropped below the vapor pressure. And we are going to have cavitation forming. couple other points just on cavitation. So we kind of talked about that, but the hotter the fluid, the easier it is for us to cavitate it. So we don't have to drop the pressure as much to create vapor, right? So the hotter the fluid, the higher the pressure that it's going to have, that it's going to evaporate at. So an example of this where you may come into cavitation problems is something like a feed water pump. So if we're preheating feed water, we're going to have higher temperature feed water. And that pump is also going to be designed to produce high pressures to overcome boiler pressure. So we have two factors there that work against us where we have a large pressure difference. That pump's going to have to create a lot of suction. And it's at a fairly high temperature. And because of those two factors, say a feed water pump might be at high risk of cavitation uh, just because of its operating conditions. So how do we go about making sure a pump isn't at risk of cavitating? Well, we have a value or a, a term known as my NPSH. And what NPSH stands for is net positive suction head. Okay, and that's a term that we would use to describe the performance of a pump. NPSH is really the head that needs to exist at the pump suction in order for it to be safe from cavitation. Now we have two different NPSHs that we use. We could talk about the NPSHR, and that would be really from the pump manufacturer, how much head is required. So what is the minimum amount that we need in order to prevent cavitation at some operating point? And then we also typically would talk about the NPSH available, A, NPSH A, and that's saying, well, we have X amount of head available. And as long as NPSH A is greater than NPSH R, then our pump should not cavitate.
So in an earlier video, we looked at some pump performance curves, and we'll come back and take a look at those in a little more detail later. Um, but what I wanted to point out here is here's, here's another one. And this one has NPSH R listed on the diagram. Okay, so it says NPSHR, and then we have some uh, lines that correspond to my NPSHR. Um, there's a couple different ways that NP, uh, NPSHR are listed on the diagram, and so there's a few different ways that you can look at them. Sometimes they have their own axis, sometimes they're, they're listed off to the side. Um, but if you look around for it, usually most pump performance diagrams will have some form of NPSHR on them. Okay, so just as an example, um, if we had an operating point here for our pump, uh, I guess 1700 RPM and at some, some operating point, um, what we could see is that this would require 10 feet or I guess around 4 meters of positive suction head that was available at the inlet of that pump to prevent it from cavitating. Okay, so here's a couple of example problems related to NPSH. So a manufacturer specifies a required NPSH of 5 meters for a certain pump. To satisfy this requirement, what must be the minimum pressure be at the section of the pump if the liquid being moved is water at 120 degrees Celsius. Okay, so in order to solve this, I'm going to need a few properties of water. So I'm going to bring up my little chart here, and I know that I'm going to need um, at 120 degrees uh, a few things. So I'm just going to write it over here, 120 degrees Celsius. I have a pressure equal to 198.53, and I have a VF value, and that's going to be equal to 1.0603. Okay, so I'm going to calculate my density. So density is going to be equal to 1 over VF. Is going to be equal to 1 over 1.0603 times 10 to the negative 3. So remember that's times 10 to the negative 3. And that's going to give me a density value of uh, pretty close to 943 kilograms per cubic meter. Okay, so if we know how much pressure this value of NPSH really is worth, Um, well, we know that pressure is equal to rho gh, and my pressure is going to be equal to my density of my fluid, so 943 kilograms per cubic meter times gravity, so 9.81 meters per second squared, times my height, so 5 meters worth of height. And what I would find is that I have a pressure value equal to... Um, about 46,000 pascals, so 46,254 pascals. Okay, so that's not the pressure that I need to have at my pump. What that's saying is that's how much pressure that the pump is going to essentially require at its input above and beyond the point of creating vapor. So if we think back, like we had that, we had that little chart in that last portion, and we said, you know, the, the pressure kind of was, was here, um, and it was compared to the vapor pressure. Okay, so, so really what NPSH is saying is that we must have at least a pressure here. So, so the inlet to that pump must have at least a certain amount of pressure. 
However, that vapor pressure is still going to be a variable that isn't included into NPSH. So when we want to find the minimum pressure, it's going to be equal to my NPSH plus my vapor pressure. So in this case, I have 46.254 kilopascals plus the data from my table, 198.53 kPa. And if I add up those values, I get 244.8 kilopascals. So when we're finding the minimum pressure required, we're going to use the pressure created through that NPSH. And we have to also include the vapor pressure because that's going to be a variable that changes based on the temperature of the fluid. The fluid's too hot, even with a high amount of NPSH, we still may have cavitation occurring.